I'm going to be reviewing slide and divide method for factoring. So with slide and divide, your first step is to slide A to C. And when you slide, you multiply, multiply. And then step two is to factor. Now, in step two where it says factor, you'll have x squared plus bx plus c. You will no longer have a number in front. That's what makes this easy. And then step three is to divide. Once you've got your factors, you're going to divide by A. Now I'll show you what that means. Um, the big thing is to remember that if you slide, if you slide, you must divide. So I've got an example. x squared plus 6x plus 1 equals negative 7. If you remember back to class, we've got this idea of a zero product property. Don't want the highlighter. The zero product property. Which says if you have two things equal to zero, you can set each piece equal to zero. That only works if you have equal zero. So before I can do any factoring in any method is to move over if you have a number on the right side of the equal sign. So I'm going to move over negative 7, which means add 7 to both sides. My problem will become x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. Now that I have 0, I can go to factoring. Now I said the slide and divide really only is necessary when you have a number in front. So in this case, I don't have any number in front of the x squared. I can go right to my factors. So because I didn't slide anything, there is no need to divide. What I'm looking for is two numbers that multiply to C in my case multiply to 8 and add to 6 or B. So I want to multiply to 8 and add to 6. Okay, so my factors of 8 or my um, numbers that multiply to give me 8 are 1 and 8, 2 and 4, that's it. There's no 3 and then I start going 4 and 2, 8 and 1. There's no need to rewrite them with the order just reversed. I'm looking for 2, remember, that will add to 6. So of these two, 1 and 8 and 2 and 4, 2 and 4 are the only ones that will add to 8. So I've got 2 and 4, x and x, because I also have to multiply to x squared. The only way to multiply to x squared to split it up is x and x. Now let's look at my signs. I want to multiply the positive number and then add to a positive number. So the only way to do that is positive, positive. Check these. You check by FOIL. So um, let's work over here. x plus 2, x plus 4. This is my check. FOIL says first x times x gives me x squared. Outer 4 times 2, or 4 times x, which is 4x. Inner 2 times x. And last 2 times 4 gives me 8. Combine up my like terms. 
get 6x plus 8, which if you notice, 6x plus 8 is the same thing as my question, 6x plus 8. So I know my factors are correct. Now that I've got that confirmed, I'm going to do my zero product property, which says take each piece and set it equal to zero. And then solve. Minus 2, minus 2, get x equals negative 2 is one of my answers. And minus 4, minus 4, x equals negative 4 is my other answer. So I have two solutions to x squared plus 6x plus 1 equals negative 7. I have x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 4. In Hawks, you would put those two with a comma between them. So my next example, 15 equals x plus 6 times x minus 8. If that was a 0 on the left-hand side, I could go straight to the zero product property. However, that says equals 15, not 0. So I can't do anything until I have equals 0. Well, that means I need to get this thing all expanded out, and then I can move that 15 over. Well, the way I expand is I FOIL. So I'm going to do x times x gives me x squared. x times negative 8 gives me negative 8x. 6 times x plus 6x. And then 6 times negative 8 gives me negative 48. And I'm going to go ahead and move that 15 to the other side. Now, it doesn't matter which way I move the 15 just as long as I keep everything on the same side. Order doesn't matter over the equality sign. So I'm going to combine up like terms. That gives me 2x. And then negative 48 minus 15, because I'm going to move the negative 15, gives me negative 63. And those cancel and give me 0. Now I am set up nicely to go through and factor. So again, I don't have an A in front, which is great. So I'm going to look for all my factors of 63. I want two numbers that multiply to negative 63, which tells me one negative, one positive, and then add to negative 2. So I always start with 63 and 1, because that's the easy one. Now I'm going to find 63 and something else. Well, 3 and 21. So now I'm looking for 4. No 4, what about a 5? No 5, what about a 6? No 6, skip down to 9 and get 7 and 9. Now those two are a difference of two, so I know those are going to be um, my numbers that I pick. However, I need to figure out which one's positive and which one's negative. When you have opposite signs like this, the bigger number takes the sign of B. So I'll have negative 9, positive 7. X and X. Got two things being multiplied to zero, so I can use my zero product property. x equals 9, because I add 9 to both sides, subtract 7, and get x equals negative 7. So in Hawks, I would do 9, comma, negative 7. Here's an example of slide and divide. I reason I'm using slide and divide is because there's a number in front of the x squared. So my problem says 2x squared minus 13x plus 29 equals 8. So I want to do slide and divide. Again, because there is an a, there is a number in front of x squared. Before I can do any factoring, I have to get equal to 0 on one side of the equal sign. It's going to be much easier to move 8 to the left then moving all the other numbers over to the right. 
So I'm going to subtract 8, subtract 8, and get 2x squared minus 13x plus 21. Now I've got equals 0. So again, because I have a number in front of the x squared, that's why I'm going to use the slide and divide method. So slide and divide says you take A and you slide it down to C. When you slide it, you multiply. So I'm going to move A down, which leaves just x squared, 13x plus. The number that goes here is going to be 2 times 21, which gives me 42. So that's how I got 42. Now the problem should be much simpler because I don't have to deal with any number in front. I go right to my factors, which is going to give me x and x. So I'm listing off my factors of 42. 42 is positive, so that means they're going to be the same sign. B, though, tells me that I'm going to have negative, negative. Okay, so I've got 1 and 42, and then I'm going to look for my 2, which is 2 and 21. I'm going to look for a 3, 14. I'm going to look for a 4, which there isn't one. It gives me a decimal. I'm going to look for a 5. Isn't one. It gives me a decimal. I'm going to look for a 6. So those are all my factors of 42. Now these things would start repeating because I would have 7 and 6, 14 and 3, 21 and 2, 42 and 1. I only need to write down 1. Don't need to write down the repeat. I'm looking for ones that would give me a difference of 13, or sorry, give me a sum of 13 because I've got like signs. So I'm going to pick 6 and 7. Again, I picked that they were both going to be negative signs because 42, C was positive, C was positive, and B was negative. So anytime C is positive, it tells me they're the same sign. I look to B to tell me what they both are, and in this case, they're both subtraction. Now, the very important part with slide and divide is that when you slide, you remember to divide. If you type this thing into Hawks, this right here, it will not be correct. On your test, that will not be correct because that factor, if I were to multiply that out, that gives me this up above. It does not give me the actual question, which is what I wanted. So I divide everything by A. That takes into account the slot. That makes it legal. So in the first one, I've got x minus 3, because 6 divided by 2 gives me 3. 7 over 2, this one, doesn't simplify, so I'm going to take this 2 and slide it up in front of the x. So I'll have 2x minus 7 equals 0. Now from here, I have the factored one. In Hawks, this would be your step one. I can use the zero product property and set each piece equal to zero. This one's going to give me x equals three. Now over here, I'm going to add seven, seven, and get two x. 7 and then divide by 2. So my two answers will be x equals 3 and x, not y, x equals 7 over 2.